from It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Give me a darn break. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show today. Not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, we began a conversation uh, that started with that Patty Stanger from that Millionaire Matchmaker show on Bravo. And amazingly, she said many of the same things I've been telling you about what men want and what women need to do if they want to have a relationship. Among the things she said in this piece on AOL.com, men hate short hair. She said that women need to adhere to traditional gender roles to develop long-lasting connections. Men have to learn to be men. Women have to learn to be women. Oh, yes. She believes that um, that it's very important for people uh, to know what the other sex wants and then to give it to them. And in the case of men, men want women with long hair who um, I would presume have a hot meal waiting when you come home and fold your socks. A lot of women don't want to hear this. And that's why they'll never have a successful marriage or long-term relationship. Boo-hoo-hoo. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. Steven is listening to our online stream in San Diego on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I, I love your topic. And uh, what I was calling in for is because women will always show themselves their their shortcomings on their own if you give it to them. Your two women callers. The first one, she got into an argument with you, and you were very clear. You said, if you live here, you will cook. You weren't telling her. You weren't saying all women. You said, if you live here, you will cook. She wanted to argue her point for nothing. Women will do that. They'll argue over nothing. They just want to argue with somebody. If they I, I mean, the, the bottom line is nobody has to live in my house. Nobody has to live in my house. If you don't like the conditions, please don't ask me for a key. Absolutely. That's all That's all you told her. And she did. She want to argue it out. Like you're going to say, yes, you know what, you're right. Come in my house, live with me. You don't have to pick, cook nothing. What was she thinking? What are, what are women thinking? And, and the other girl, we don't need to know what your menu is on. We don't know what you're capable of cooking. Just take care of your man. Handle it. That's all. The, that's the point. We don't need your repertoire of what you cook, what you can't cook, when he yelled at you. Jeez, women just want to go on and on. And it's, it's anywhere, whether East Coast, West Coast, North or South. Women will fight about whatever they want to fight about, and then they never do what they're supposed well, to do. Well, here's the bottom line. Guys with money don't have to argue. That is right. And on on that subject, I thank you very, very much, Tom. Three years ago, I went through a divorce. You opened up my eyes. I live alone, and I'm happier than I've ever been. Are you getting more ass than a toilet seat? And then some. And then some, Tom. Thank you very, very much. Oh, I'm here to help. I can never repay the tutelage you gave me. Can you uh, take me out, Michael Vick style, please? I certainly can, Stephen. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Layla on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi. Hello. I love your show and agree with everything you say. Well, thank you. Um, I have a comment for American women. If they want to keep their husbands, if they want to know how to be good mothers, 
and they deserve to have husband. It's a lifetime. They have to study a little bit of um, humanity, uh, maybe anthropology, and go see what other women do in other countries so they are successful to keep their husbands and not go through all those divorces, you know. Uh, maybe they should learn from Middle Eastern women. They know what to do. They obey. Not, not, to, not to obey, but they, they, they do whatever they need to do, you know. Um, I think um, we, uh, women in America are very spoiled. I think um, they, they believe men should do anything to keep them, but they are wrong. It's time to accept that they should do anything to, to keep their husbands. That's exactly right. And uh, there's a lot of women out there who can't figure out why they can't find a husband. Like I said, that shows Sex in the City. There's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You know, women want to get out in the morning, come home, and to have the husband home. It's not right. They need to do whatever they're supposed to do. They, are, they forgot what the nature wants, you know? Well, Middle Eastern women do anything they should do, and during the noon, they take their power nap. They stimulate their mind to be prepared to serve their husbands at night. I think women in America, in America should learn such things. Yeah. Well, they, get uh, well, up, they get up in the morning, go to work uh, all night. They are worried what to wear in the morning, go to please their bosses. It's time to stay at home and think what to do to please their husband. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, the other thing is that any man who is a professional, any man who is successful, any man who is rich, we don't have to listen to women like that who never shut up, who always trying to tell us what to do. We don't have to listen to it. They don't deserve to have a man lifetime, you know. They well, just turn to lesbians and find other women to have sex with. <laughs> as you know, I am currently living alone. I and know. I've been know. living alone for years because I was I was absolutely fed up with a woman trying to tell me what to do, trying to tell me how to change, trying to tell me how to be, and I, I just gave her the boot. Yep. I know you. <laughs> and, and now I'm so happy. And the next, if I ever have another relationship with a woman living in my home, I guarantee you she'll be making me dinner every yes. night. Yes, yes, yes. And I say if women were supposed to be out, God would give them penis. <laughs> 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 and if, if, if men were supposed to be uh, dead at home, God would give them breath. That's exactly so, right. Gender roles should be followed. Uh, well, I, well, certainly if you want to stay together and be happy, because those are the people who do stay together. Yep. Next time you choose somebody, choose a woman, uh, choose a Middle Eastern. They know how to treat you. <laughs> Is that so? <laughs> Thank you very much. I enjoy your show, and be good. Thank you, Layla. Appreciate the call. Scott is listening to our online stream in Vancouver, British Columbia. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Tom, it's been too long. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I travel a lot, and there's a thing that women just seem to have this air of expectancy, like they're owed these things. Yeah, a sense of entitlement. That's it exactly. We're sort of there for them. Uh, if what we want happens to coincide with what they want, eh, then, then that's okay. But they're always right, we're always wrong. What you were saying, what you said to women, if they don't like it, take it. Uh, it's pretty funny. I recently broke up with a woman who was like that, who had no problem telling me what was wrong with me. If I happened to share what I thought was wrong with her, it was the end of the world and start a huge fight. And I said, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Adios. How did she react to that? She tried to start a fight, she'd cry, she'd scream, uh, how dare you, you're hurting my feelings, it's a, hurt, it's a hurtful thing. And I'd say, well, why is it hurtful for you but not for me? Well, I'm just trying to help you. It's the same with everything in life. I had a girlfriend who thought I should buy her everything. What do you need another pair of shoes for that you're going to wear once? It's crazy. They just think it's owed to them. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They think it's owed to them. 
And, Not to mention and, the fact, you know what it's like, you know, I, they, they, can, they, they, they try to interfere with everything you like doing. I don't uh, know what it's like in California these days, but Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, it's insane. It's just they're right and you are wrong. I had I had uh, this ex who I talk about frequently who just started going through my life and you could check off everything I love. She hated it and, and made a point of not just saying she hated it, but trying to interfere with my enjoyment of it. Uh, jazz. I have a box of the Hollywood Bowl. Imagine them having a box of the Hollywood Bowl for eight Wednesdays in the summertime. And you can invite other people, you know, and you sit in the box and you have wine and food and you're sitting under the stars listening to these amazing jazz performers. And she'd be like, ugh, the Hollywood Bowl, ugh, we gotta pay, we gotta get something to eat and bring it over there, we gotta take the bus, ugh, ugh. Uh, hockey. That was the other one. She just could not stand the fact that I loved hockey. And she would come with me to the games at Staples Center. And she knew when the puck was going to drop. And right about that time, she would head off to say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Come on. I want to go get something to eat. I'll be like, well, you go get something to eat. The game is starting. I'll be here when you get. No, I don't want to go alone. Go with me. Oh, you got to go with huh? Let me guess. When it came to her things, not only did you have to take it, she wanted you to actually enjoy it. Oh, Not to yes. You, enjoy it, you had to enjoy it. Oh, yes, yes. And I uh, finally, at one point, when she, by the way, this was the last draw at hockey. One night she demanded, in the middle of the second period of a game, she demanded that we go into the, uh, the team store and go shopping for like cute, you know, pink t shirts with the team logo on it and stuff. I'm like, I am not leaving this game. Uh -huh. I'm not doing it. Oh. And and when we left the game that night, I, we were driving out of the parking lot of Staples Center, and I said, you are on very thin ice. <laughs> you are not going to ruin my games. And that was the last game I took her to. That was it. She was done. Done. Well, it's very logical. I, I did once in a great while, you'll meet a woman who'll say, you know, we have nothing in common. And you'll break up honestly. But most of the time... When I've broken up with a woman, she's either mystified or I'm a jerk. Well, and the thing is, you're just supposed to knuckle under and like what she likes and give up all the things she doesn't like. Your your old Mustang, uh, your your buddies. Oh, my boat. Your Sunday what do we need a boat for? There's more important things to spend money on. I went right. up to her room. I took up one of those giant garbage bags. I put all her shoes in the garbage bag. Took it down to her while she was watching some TV show. Dumped them all out in front of her. There had to be 30 pairs of shoes. And I uh, said, there's my boat. Right. And how many of these pairs of shoes have you worn once? Oh, yeah. By the That's way, I, different. I, and the I, like going, I like going to great restaurants. I also like good wine. And she would look at a bottle of wine and she would say, I look at a case of wine and I see that could have been another handbag. She hey. literally said that. My ex, if she paid a hundred bucks for something, and she sold it at a garage sale for one dollar, it came out even. Ah. Uh, hey, can you take me out Kingdom style? I certainly can. Fire. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I took your advice staunchly, and I've been dating lots of different girls and banging all kinds of chicks. If you only knew, more ass than a toilet seat. Love that. Oh, jeez. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like a show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. And uh, we continue with your calls here. We're talking about uh, the fact that women are just not realistic about what they're going to have to do in order to have desirable guys. They're not. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight. Six six. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Sarah on the Tom Likas show. Hi Tom. Thanks Hi Sarah. For having me on. Hi. So I mean, 
I, I think that what you're talking about as far as, you know, cooking for your man is just the tip of the iceberg. This is such an important conversation because we are just creating a society of emasculated men and women who are confused as hell. You know, we, we've kind of created this situation where we want, you know, women send each other mixed messages. We still say we want our man to step up to the plate. We want them to be a man. We want them to take care of us, you know, sweep us off our feet. But we sure as hell won't cook dinner for them. It's, it's, it's scary to me. Well, uh, you know, I, I, again, I voted with my feet. Uh, or at least, <laughs> I, I, Actually, I voted with one foot with a big boot on it. <laughs> and uh, the last one uh, who refused to cooperate got the big boot. Right. Well, absolutely. I mean, if, if you if you want to be treated like a woman, which we uh, which all the women say they do, you have to treat your man like a man. You know, there's just you you take care of them, you cook their dinner. I mean, women. For, some of my friends get crazy when I say, you know, what you have to have sex when your guy wants to have sex with you. I mean, these are just, these are the things that you need to do, not just, you know, for your man, but for yourself if you want a relationship. That's right. That carries, that that you get what you've always said you wanted from your relationship. That's right. But really what American women want is they want a sperm donor and a human wallet. That's what they want. They want somebody who will uh, give them children and then be financially responsible for them. Right. Right. Uh, and I mean, they're happy to take care of the kids, but they just don't want to take care of, of the men who give them uh, the what makes it possible to have all of that. Well, it's hard when when we're telling each other, when women are telling each other complete, you know, complete mixed messages. You know what I mean? We're, we've no longer told, we are no longer telling ourselves that it's okay to do these things. We've somehow been telling each other that this is a sign of weakness, that this is, you know, that's not equality. And yet, you know, you, you just, you can't, you can't have the guy who is going to listen to you and, and be your best friend also be the guy that's going to be strong and protect you. They're just not the same guy. That's so exactly I think women right. need to first figure out which kind of guy they want and, and, and grow up and get realistic. There's no doubt about it. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Well, I love your show, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Appreciate the call, 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Tara on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. What's up, baby? Not much, dear. How you doing? Okay. Good. Well, I just wanted to call. Um, kind of got off track from my first point, but first of all, I think it's hilarious that the women that you date who don't think they know you are surprised by the way you act once they find out who you are and what you Well, do. you have to understand, and I'm glad you bring that up, because women who do know me uh, from my radio program, here's what they generally say. You're a teddy bear. You can't possibly be like that guy on the radio. You got to act. You can't possibly be like that. So what, here's the great thing about that. I'm so glad they believe that. Good. Because what they do is they figure I've got money, power, and fame. They hop into the sack with me. They give me what I want. And then they proceed to try to treat me like every other boyfriend with the constant text messaging and phone calls and stuff. And I don't respond at all. Well, absolutely. They're going to be the one that changes you. They're like the right. – yeah, exactly. So, so here's what happens. They think they've got the magic vagina that's going to make all these changes. And when it doesn't. They start saying, I can't believe what you're like. I can't believe what you're like. I say, you knew what I was like. Believe it, baby. That's the way it is. And then, oh, so yeah. here's what they do. They th- they say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to see you anymore. I'm not going to date somebody like you. It's like, that's about the time I was sick of seeing them anyway, and I'm yeah. ready for some new meat. It's the perfect crime. No, I think you got the best life going for yourself. I love your show. I love you. I've been listening for a long time. It's the first time I've actually called, but I was actually calling because, um, Obviously, roles are changing because women are kind of, you know, stepping more into the workplace and all that stuff. But ultimately, what they had going on in the 50s and 60s with women knowing their role in the home, taking care of their man, cooking, cleaning, doing all that stuff, it's still important. And those are the fundamentals that people don't need to lose sight of. I mean, you can still go to work every day and come home and cook dinner Keep the house clean, take care of your man whenever he wants it, and ultimately that's going to make a perfectly happy home. Whether you're living in his house, sharing the bills, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the fundamentals are the fundamentals for a reason. That's why people have been together for so long. So that's what I think. Well, and then you have these women. Have you ever heard them call the show? I mean, the, the truth is staring them in the face. Here's what they say. I'm 32, I'm not married, 
I want to have a marriage like my grandparents had. They were married for 75 years. It's like, you know why they were married for 75 years? Because your grandmother didn't give your grandfather any lip. She made no. him dinner, and she shut up about it. Absolutely. I kind of I was listening to what Sarah was saying earlier, and I like her point. I mean, you just have to be able to give them what they want, and they're going to respect you for respecting them. And Otherwise, what incentive do we what incentive do we have to risk our wealth signing a contract offering to give half of it to you? I absolutely agree. I'm 30. I'm single, but uh, I've definitely been in some real long relationships and it worked out just fine best part is i wasn't married when i got out of it so it was super clean and easy to do no kids and i'm uh, i'm happy as hell so anyways i love your show i love you and uh hopefully i'll get to talk to you again maybe meet you someday well you never know tara thank you very much for the call wow one 800 tom that's our telephone number here is Todd on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Todd. How are you, Father? Great, son. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank Listen, you. my wife and I are having a little argument or discussion right now because she had the assumption that yesterday you said something about that women are like toilets. Human toilets. Human toilets. I said he may have made that statement. However... With it, whatever it was that you said, she took out of context. Well, I tell men to treat women like human toilets. In, instead of worrying about their feelings, the purpose of a date is to get laid. Exactly. You know, when I, when I, when I visit a urinal and I'm relieved and I'm done doing my business, I don't fall in love with that piece of porcelain. I don't worry that it might feel like I abused it by using it. I, I simply flush and get the hell out of there. Exactly. So but I got to tell you, my wife, I, you know, I hear all you say about women. What have you? I've, I've got an excellent wife. I mean, she shares her girlfriends with me, so she's a wonderful woman. Look at that. See, so you can't beat that. So However, for you, it's like whatever, whatever stall like you, whatever does. for you, whatever stall you want to go into, you go in. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Take me out with a bong hit. Here you go. Can we all just get a bong? Here comes Chris on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. I just wanted to, to tell you I agree with what you're saying. I got a wife out here and I just... You are how old? I'm 23. And you got married when? I got married when I was 21, Tom. Uh, there Maybe. we go. And uh, you were talking about telling uh, one of your exes that she was on thin ice, and I've told my wife the same thing because I work 12 to 20 hours a day in the industry I'm in, five to six days a week. I don't want to come home and cook and clean the house. You know, we've got a kid, and uh, all she wants to do is sit around and take care of the kid and do nothing and then have me cook or whatever when I get home, and it's just... But with the work I'm doing, you know, it's just, it's not right that she gets to sit at home and do nothing. Well, that's what you get because you got married too young and then uh, started squirting out kids uh, like in no time flat. So now she's got you by the balls. Yeah, you know, I messed up, Tom. Now, were you a listener back then when you got married? No, I wasn't. Just moved mm -hmm. into California about uh, three years ago. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. Because <laughs> uh, we would have warned you. Well, it's just, you know, I don't, I, don't know, I don't understand how women expect men to go do all the physically demanding work that they do. And, and you then you want to know how they expect it? Because in the case of your wife, she knows if, uh, if you uh, decide to leave her, you're going to have to pay her. That's true. Easy money for them, huh? So they, they know it. They know they've got you over a barrel. They know it. I mean, you gave what you gave it just so you know, and you were not a listener. You gave away the store. If she wants to have a baby, make her wait ten years. Yeah, I should have done that. But then she has to serve you for at least ten years, and then by the by the way, if she gets sick of it, then she leaves. Hooray! Exactly. Wish I'd listened to your show back in the day, man. You and me both. All right, Tom, can you take me out of the bong rip? 
I certainly can. No cough. Tom Like It. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Like It. You say uh, women are just toilets? That does not make any sense. Human okay. toilet, yes. That is crap. Like, okay, a girl cannot be called a toilet. Appropriate. It's the Tom Like It Show. The Tom Like It Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ellen is listening to our online stream in Chicago on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's me, Ellen. I just said that. I know, and I wanted to tell you, I think, I'm sorry to say this, Tom, you lost it, okay? I've listened to you for a long time. If you guys want... Like robots, why don't you get like Stepford wives or something? Don't you well, want? Well, darling, I, I, first of all, you have to understand, um, I come from a position of strength. I don't need a relationship. I don't need a wife. Don't need children. And therefore, I can pretty much have my pick of, of what I want, including to pick nothing. Oh, so you'd rather have no sex at all? Oh, I have sex, but I don't necessarily have to choose to have someone living in my house. Okay, can we go back to the average people out there then? I think that the average people out there, men and women, I think personally it's better to have a relationship. Again, I'm going to say this, where the man stays home and does all the cooking and no, the cleaning. No, and no, no, no. That, that man is a pussy and will not be respected by the woman uh, who is going out to the office. Uh, and, uh, sure, if men want to do that, they have the option of doing that in this society, but the other men are going to think he's a pussy, and he himself is going to feel like a pussy. The other man thinks he's a pussy. Well, you he don't. And, and by the way, what is, what is your house husband's name? His name's Nick. Nick. Uh, he's house a pussy. Husband. What can I say? Nick. Huh? You, you got to watch your mouth on the air. Oh, do you understand? Sorry. We're on he's the radio. Say <laughs> Jesus. The bottom line here is that, uh, look, uh, by the way, you don't, you don't have to be rich to tell women uh, you're not going to put up with this stuff. No man has to put up with this stuff. What about the women out there? We don't have to put up with this stuff either. Great. What about uh, you guys? Now, by the way, games? we don't. We do not need you living in our house. We don't need you guys living in our houses either. No, that's perfectly okay. Yeah, let me tell you about my house. It has okay. nothing to do with wealth. Um, I, I'm drinking a beer right now from a kegerator. Okay. My own kegerator. I've got a kegerator. I've got flat screens all over the house. I've got DVRs with games being recorded everywhere. I've got a stripper pole in my master bathroom. I mean, my house is the way I want it. And I don't have to listen to anybody like you telling me what to do. What makes you say because... The person stays at home that the woman who's on the other end working is telling that man what to do. Because she's already wearing the pants of the family. She's already going to the office and giving orders to others. Chances are she's going to come home and give orders there, too. I know guys like your husband, and they have to take orders all the time. Would you like to hear from the other half and hear what he has to say? No, he need to buy a phone, but uh, I thank you. He'll need to dial himself in here. 1-800-5800-TOM. And of course, uh, you know, with the prison warden there, he's going to say that everything's fine and the Ayatollah's treating him great. I know that. What's the point of that? 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Melissa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are Hello. you? I'm doing great, Melissa. Well, I, I actually agree with you. I'm a first-time listener. I've been listening. Actually, I just moved to L.A. from uh, Colorado. And um, I, this is the first time I've been hearing this, and um, I find you absolutely hilarious, and you make some really good points. And uh, as a female who has pride herself on keeping her life straight and tangle-free, um, it's hard to find a good man out there who actually can be a man, because I think due to feminism and due to a couple other things, they've been eviscerated, but they've also kind of kind of become putzes. I hate to say it. They can't stand up for themselves. It drives me crazy when I hear Oh, there's no doubt about it. But that's what drives women crazy about me, like that last caller, Ellen. That's what drives women crazy about me. They can't believe how many women I have available to me. 
They well, can't probably, believe. You, know, you probably treat them right, and you're giving them rules. It's like children. Children need boundaries, and when they have boundaries, they're happy. And, uh, same thing with my uh, puppy dogs when I've had them over the years. Exactly. Exactly. They, wa they want to please their master. And, uh, you know, you have to have your woman trained. Maybe you need to have her wear a dog collar just to remember her place. I, I think you are correct. <laughs> I mean, I hate to well, say well, it, but at the same point in time, you know, men also need to assert themselves in the sense of, like, I'm the man, I'm holding open the door, I'm doing this because um, I'm a man. And if you don't appreciate it because you're going to be a woman, then you need to exit. Well, if I'm holding open the door, you're making dinner. I'm telling you oh, right uh, now. Oh, yeah, I agree. I completely agree. I love cooking. And it's. I can't believe how many men here in L.A. are floored that I know how to cook. I, I, I'm actually, I'm like, you mean to tell me a girl doesn't cook for you? By the way, but, you'd be amazed how many women are floored that I know how to cook. And you can see, they're, rather than looking pleased, they look crestfallen like, oh, my God, I hold no power over this guy. My house, my, my two houses are immaculate. And, and they, they, the women love to come in and say, oh, you just need a little, little female touch around here. That's all you need. Well, they come into my house and it's clean, organized, everything in its place. Pots and pans perfectly organized for when I make dinner, which I do often. That's, and, and you are a commendable man. Um, and like I said, and I completely agree with you, by the way, women eviscerating men in front of their coworkers and vice versa, like men talking about like if a woman looks heavy in her clothing or you know, whatever. You don't do that in front of your loved ones. I mean, there's nothing more powerful and more sexy to other people than a man and a woman who are in alignment with each other. That should be a fierce relationship. Fierce. You don't mess with the pair. By the and, way, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I have... With me, with, when, I, when I dated my men that I dated, you don't say anything bad about my man in front of me. You're going to get your head taken off. And you're going to get verbally put in place in a very elegant manner. By the way, the problem is not usually other people uh, saying negative things about me when I've been in a relationship. It's the person I'm with who should be my That's cheerleader. That's what I mean. They should, that should never, ever be an issue. And when it is an issue, you know what? It's dumb. They really need to realize they need to re leave the relationship. Um, they can't walk in and expect to change you. I mean, I, right. I laugh at women. Uh, and I'm sorry you had the hockey game. Never leave your seat at a hockey game. I'm a I don't. Fan. I am the girl with the cowbells at the end, man. I, I love, love hockey. Um, it's ridiculous. You should have just packed her off. You should have had a chauffeur come take her ass to a taxi and send her on her way if she didn't want to watch the game. Well, so. it was kind of difficult because, uh, you know, in California, they've got all these laws that originated with the domestic violence crowd. You can't just put somebody out. You have to file paperwork, and you have to go to an attorney. You mean, they have, you mean to tell me you could not have gotten her a taxi and sent her on her way? You're kidding. Oh, I could, but, but I could have sent her on her way, but on her way would be back to the place where we live together. That's where she would go. Oh, you made the mistake. Huh? Oh, yeah. So I've talked about that. Oh, yes. Yeah. That was the last time I had someone live with me, and it was like, oh, no, I'm, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetie. You the don't deserve that. <laughs> stupidest things we men do. The stupidest things. You know, I say with us women. I, I, will, I vow now I will never live with a man ever again. Um, I've done it a few times, and they get too comfortable. Um, you know, they're getting sex all the time, and then all of a sudden they start not putting out enough, and they come home and they sleep too much, or they're not, you know, treating me as a female. And I'm like, excuse me? Um, you know, some of us like sex every night, too, and that's our prerequisite. If I'm going to put dinner on the table, you better be putting out. Good points. You know, um, there's a lot of us women out there that, uh, you know, enjoy sex. We want sex. And there's nothing worse than a man who can't rise to the occasion because of other things. If I'm but I understand, though, that we, work, we also go through a period when women in their 20s and their late teens, even when they like or need sex, will never admit that. It's, it's women who get to be 35 or 40 who say, the hell with the games, the hell with being coy about this. I need to get laid. No, I was kind of like that all through my 20s and the majority of my 30s, and that's probably why I left a lot of men in the dust. <laughs> Love it. I, I think that I'm kind of like a male, ver a female version of you. Um, really? you know, if you don't put out and you let me go for three days, I'm gone. Love you it. Know? And, 
and I will treat you like a god because you are correct. If women treat their man correctly, the man will be more than happy to do whatever needs to be done. But again, don't eviscerate him in front of his friends. I don't care if you don't like hockey. You go and you sit and you watch hockey and you enjoy it. Don't make it miserable for him to enjoy something he loves. I hate that when women do that. Well, I don't like doing that. Whatever. You know, I, I used to have a boyfriend who was in the military and flew in the Air Force C-141s uh, when they were going. And when he'd come home from a trip, his jet ski was loaded in the back of my truck. We were heading out to the river as soon as he hit home because I knew that's what he loved to do. And he'd been three weeks out in the system, and I knew if I took him out, jet skied him, fed him well when I got home, I knew I was going to get sex, and I'd have a happy man. And I did for five years. Wow. And, and let me tell you, I loaded a jet ski myself, Tom. <laughs> you know, I wanted to make sure, because, and I'm not a big jet ski fan, but you know what? I went to the river, I watched him enjoy himself, and I was happy for him. You know, we lose that one very important thing. You've got to be happy for your mate at what they're doing that makes them happy, and make sure there's time set aside for that, and go and enjoy them. Men are simple creatures. You guys are very easy. Very easy. We are. We're hungry. We're horny. We're thirsty. Shut up. Exactly. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> but in easy. the meantime, also, too, you know, we got to raise the consciousness of these men out there to be men and step up to the plate. Um, and, you know, really, if they're going to, you know, if you're going to treat a woman with parameters, you better be able to be a man yourself. No you doubt about it. You can't waffle. It. You can't waffle. I agree um, with that. Yeah, I have a great story, too. I have a friend of mine who drove an hour and a half for a date. Asked the woman out. He's also a pilot uh, for a big airline. I won't say which. Gets there, enters in at the same time she does. They walk up to the restaurant door. He, being the gentleman that he is, you know, Air Force Academy grad, opens up the door. She proceeds to barrage him with how she's an independent woman and can open up her own doors for herself. <laughs> and meanwhile, people are exiting the restaurant looking at this one. What the heck? So she enters in the restaurant. He lets go of the door, gets back in his car and is leaving and she comes running out like what are you doing what are you doing he goes, i'm sorry i just came down here to take a lady out and obviously i made a big mistake rolled up his window and drove an hour and a half back home very nice very yeah, nice left her ass in the parking lot where she belonged i love that i agree you know and right. You know, women, I agree. I have long hair. I dress in dresses. I want to be female and feminine. And um, and it's enjoyable. And I want to be that woman that men go, wow, that's what I want. You know, and that makes me happy. Well, all I can say is, Melissa, it all sounds good to me. Thanks a lot for the call. Peter. Yes, Tom. Here we are. Yeah. Long time listener, first time caller. Yes, sir. I prescribe to the Tom Lakers uh, philosophy. Uh, I, I've met you years ago, uh, but I came to this country 11 years ago from Canada. And through hard work and through uh, 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 a lot of work, I've managed to uh, obtain a uh, acre and a half estate in Beverly Hills, four cog car garage i've got two ferraris in the in the garage i have uh six other cars i just turned 40 and i bought the two ferraris for my 40th birthday i bought them myself never been married and uh uh i just want to say i'm not the typical uh, caller but i am the typical listener to the tom Lankis show and that the typical listener to the tom Lankis show is uh often a, a six or seven or eight figure uh player and uh i just want to thank you so much that i that you've uh, been involved in my life and i subscribe to everything you say i totally love that well you're 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 my idol i i think that's fantastic and are you getting more ass than a toilet seat uh i turned down ass that guy's yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is phenomenal, the ass I get. Models, wow. actress, you know. Yeah, the, the more you uh, attain, the, the more you get. When I was 22 years old, I dated 21-year-olds. I haven't changed since then. Unbelievable. Thanks a lot for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com The Tom Likas Show.